Video games have come a long way since their inception in the 1970s, from simple black and white graphics to immersive 3D worlds. Video games have continued to evolve and advanced in ways that we never thought possible. One of the most significant developments in video games is character creation. Imagining you're the main character of a game is one thing, but when you put yourself or a version of yourself inside that game, it takes things to a whole different level. In this documentary, we will take a look at some of the games that have revolutionized character creation and how they impacted the gaming industry as we know it today. Temple of Option. One of, if not the first games to incorporate player choice into a character's creation is definitely Temple of Opshe. Now, Temple of Opshe is a dungeon crawler RPG that was released in 1979. The first iterations of the game weren't that graphically capable, but thankfully uh, they released later versions that let us see what's actually happening. Now, in the game, players would navigate through treacherous temple and battle through their enemies and seek the treasure. Alongside these features, it allowed the players to create their starting character. Alongside these features, it allowed the players to create their starting character. You could customize their name, weapon, and stats. This was significant to video games as it added a whole new layer of depth to the gameplay. For the first time in games, players could choose the type of character they wanted to play, whether it be a fighter, a wizard, a rogue, Temple of Ape Shy set the stage for character creation in video games. But, as we will see, it's just the first stepping stone of what's to come. Now the next game I want to talk about is Wizardry, released in 1981 and is often credited as one of the first role-playing games of all time. It featured a robust character creation system that allowed players to create characters with a name, race, class, and unique abilities and skills. Wizardry's character creation system also introduced the concept of alignment, where players could choose to align themselves with good, evil, or neutrality. Obviously, this concept of character creation takes heavy influence from Dungeons & Dragons, the tabletop RPG where you sit in the basement with your friends and roll dice. Almost like gambling, but not gambling. But it's able to t apply these concepts in a unique way in the game's gameplay. The alignment concept and its impact on gameplay experience, such as the different character interactions or abilities it would have, would later be adopted to many other role-playing games. However, this game does fall short in one aspect. While choosing a race, you are only able to choose from a list of fantasy races, elves, dwarfs, hobbits, etc. You aren't able to choose your skin tone or anything related to that. Although, the game is more focused on the fantasy aspect so it's pretty understandable why they didn't go the extra mile. While it just barely falls short of a character creation breakthrough, it does push character customization in the right direction and adds a unique twist that can still be seen as fresh and interesting today. Now Lambda Mu is quite the contrast to the other two titles previously talked upon. Released in 1990, it was a text-based online virtual world. Think Club Penguin meets Zork. What made it unique was its ability to allow players to create their own objects, characters, and even code, essentially letting the community create the game itself. It's sort of like the 90s version of VR Chat, which we'll get into later. What really stands out about this specific game is how it gives the player to the ability to create themselves. When creating the character, you're able to give a paragraph description about them that could say information like race, height, clothes, and their backstory. Really anything you could think of. It was also very ahead of its time, giving the player the ability to choose their gender from a variety of options. Like male, female, neuter, either, spivox, splat, plural, egotistical, royal, or second. <laughs> As you can tell, a variety of options to say the least. Even if the paragraph section isn't intuitive, like in modern games, it still gives the player creator freedom of their own internet personality. Next, we're looking at Baldur's Gate. 
Released in 1998, it's widely regarded as one of the greatest role-playing games of all time, and has even made several sequels and enhanced editions in its line of titles. It features a character creation system that allowed players to choose their character's gender, race, class, alignment, abilities, skills, appearance, and name. Now that's customization. These customizations, compared to prior installments, were top tier. You could be a variety of different fantasy races, choose nine different alignments, had multiple skin color options for your appearance, truly a breakthrough in character design. Though it's still not perfect, when choosing gender, you're only granted two options. While this only has an impact on character appearance, it still limits immersion to those who identify with other possible groups. The class system is surprisingly limiting as well. When choosing a class, race has a say in what you're allowed to choose. For example, only humans can be paladins. Not only is this disappointing, but it's also kind of racist to players that, let's say, want to play elven paladins. Still though, Baldur's Gate is a very unique game that allowed players to have their turn in the virtual playground. That, for the most part, let them be who they wanted to be. The next game that would really revolutionize character creations would be Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Released in the great year of 2002, this first person to third person RPG strayed away from the standard Dungeons and Dragons style of gameplay and went for his own type of fantasy environment. Players getting into Morrowind would be met with the ability to choose their race. This was accompanied by different statistical bonuses to each race as well as abilities unique to the race that the player could choose from. In addition to the race, the players could choose their sex and appearance of the character from this menu. Once the players had chosen what their appearance is going to look like, they could go to a different character menu where they could customize the background of the character. Now this would include the name, stats, class, and skills of the character. The unique thing here is that you could create a custom class that would impact the gameplay greatly based on what the skills and spells you choose. Character creation doesn't just end there though. Players can go through the world and equip different apparel and accessories to their character and have it reflected outwardly. I also do want to take a second here to mention the modding community of Morrowind. Players have been able to mod the game files in Morrowind to allow better in-depth character customization, but this factor varies from mod to mod and only applies if the player is able to find and install the said mods. Ah, Meme Maker, a blast from my past. In 2006, Meme Maker was released for the Nintendo Wii. This was a drastic change from the prior titles. It allowed players to create personalized avatars or Miis, which could be used in various games on the same platform. And even now, you can transfer your Miis all the way to the Nintendo Switch, which is their latest platform. I still remember my six-year-old self concocting a bald-headed, mustache-wearing monstrosity that I insisted would look like me when I was older. What made Meme Maker unique was its simplicity and accessibility, allowing players to create their avatars using a simple and intuitive interface. You can edit from a template or just start from scratch. It also didn't stress gender in the creation process. All parts are available for everyone. The only real gender choice is giving the player the ability to choose pants or a dress that you could always edit later. This kind of easy accessibility would set a precedent for future titles that made character creation simple, fun, and intuitive regardless of the player's skill level or experience. Your grandma could do it. Okay, so far, players have only really had a say in the creation of a character besides the land of move. But Drawn to Life tells the player to throw all the standards out the window and create their own game. I even have my own copy of Drawn to Life. This title is a unique platformer that was released in 2007 for the Nintendo DS. It took advantage of its dual screen mechanic of said DS by allowing the player to create all aspects of the game by doodling on the bottom screen. They made their hero, NPCs, bridges, weapons, quest items, and so much more. Really, no two playthroughs were the same. This game was definitely ahead of its time by allowing the player's imagination to be directly integrated into the gameplay. You could really be and do whatever you wanted. Now, there have been various games from here 
that really vary with the amount of creativity that the player has. You got games like Overwatch that have preset characters, but you can unlock character skins and personalize them. You got games like Ark Survival Evolved, where the player can make the character as messed up as they wanted to. You got sandbox games like Minecraft, where you can upload your own skin and texture packs to customize the looks of the game entirely. And you got games like Terraria, where you can choose and color character parts to make your own character. Now, it takes too long to talk about what each of these games did for character creation as a whole, and what unique mechanics they brought to the table. But it's definitely worth mentioning that character creation doesn't just add on to what's already been established, it evolves and changes it. There's so many ways to envision yourself in games that there isn't just one correct way to achieve character creation. Ultimately, it's down to the developers how they want to give players sovereignty over their character. Well, Rockstar Games character creation sucks and you can't tell me otherwise. I do want to mention Cyberpunk 2077, as one of its advertised features was its character creator. You could get really detailed with the characters you wanted, even going as far as customizing their uh, genitals. Whatever gender you choose in the game, and there's more than one, you can likewise wear whatever clothing you want. That's right, you can finally rock those swagger dresses while using the male body type. Finally, we catch up to modern day games, where we see the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. For those who don't know, whenever you start a new game of Pokemon, it likes to ask you whether you're a boy or a girl. If you don't know, it's pretty infamous. Well, in the newest generation, they scrapped that entirely, and instead gave you a selection of androgynous personas that you can pick from. This could be seen as a positive to most players in the community. The change has gotten rid of gender-locked clothing, which has been a controversial aspect of Pokemon since X and Y. Only be- <laughs> Only choosing Serena because she's got the better drip. However, by completely disregarding gender, you ultimately take away the player's sovereignty to choose it. This is a fundamental problem with character creation progression in games. It isn't just progression. While some games argue that the removal of gender and character creation is a step towards progression and inclusivity, others say that it's just a cheap trick to save time. In the case of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, while the removal of gender-locked clothing can be seen as a positive change, completely removing the option to choose one's gender takes away player autonomy and may not be well received by everyone in the community. What would have likely been a better move would be the option to choose your gender from options and then customize your character however you want it. Maybe going as far as to include their pronouns. As we've seen, character creation has come a long way since the conception of video games. From simple text-based customization options to more robust and diverse systems that allow you to see your character, today this feature is more important now than ever. Customized avatars litter the landscapes of games like VR chat, and entire internet personas are dedicated to making cartoon characters and various character builders. This small, yet very important aspect of games allows players to immerse themselves in their own virtual world. It allows players to see themselves as the hero or villain or anything in between, and allows them to experience a world through their own eyes. Character creation has evolved from simply choosing a name and a weapon to allowing players to customize every aspect of their character's appearance and backstory. And as technology continues to advance, we can only expect that character creation will do the same. I wouldn't be surprised if sometime in the next 10 years, developers find a way to let you choose your character's custom smell. It is truly amazing to see how far video games have come and how amazing character customization has played a significant role in their evolution. So let's continue to imagine, create, and explore new worlds through the power of character creation. See ya.